Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Excellent. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, for God has shown thee what is good. And what does the Lord desire of thee but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. If you're excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time, why don't you put your hands together and give God some praise. I said, come on, let's put our hands together and give God some praise. Amen. We've not had chapel regularly in a couple of weeks, so I'm looking forward to our time of worship uh, this morning. If we can all stand as we prepare for our call to worship. It's found on the inside cover of your bulletin as well as here on the screen. As those who are coming into the sanctuary or entering at this time, if you do not have a communion element and you need one, just raise your hand so that we are prepared. Excellent. So we know that there are some folks who need communion. And we're so grateful this morning for our uh, ushers, those who are in the National Panhellenic Council who are serving We'll make sure that you all get them. Amen? So let's now go into our call to worship. It reads, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way. As we worship you in spirit and in truth, receive us, O God. Together, with praise and thanksgiving, we glorify your name. Amen. I'm going to switch with the program just for a second, because I think we, uh, you all come on up, praise team and choir, if you all don't mind. Um, I heard Julian, or maybe it was Jalen who was playing this, and they always like when I change things up. Um, how many of us are glad that God has allowed us to be alive this morning. Oh, you all sound pretty dead. I said, how many of us are glad just to be alive this morning? Excellent, excellent, excellent. So while the choir is coming up, there's a song that says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And so before we have our hymn, I just want us to do a couple of stances of that because the Lord is doing some great and mighty things, Trey. Come right over here. It just says, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Before we have our hymn, let's do that together. Good morning, everybody. Just clap with me right here. No, 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 no. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for he is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Come on, if you know it, come on and help us sing it. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is Good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Let's take it up. Oh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is Say, good. oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is worthy, worthy. One more time, let's go up. Oh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, ready? For he is worthy, yes, he is. Oh, Lord. Oh, 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 oh,
All right, for those that are looking at me, you turn to your nicest neighbor. I'm talking to you now, all right? Turn to your nicest neighbor and look at them right dead in their eyes. And you tell them it's so good to see you. Come on, talk to the other person and say it's so good to see you. And if they didn't talk to you, look to somebody behind you and just wave at somebody and say it's so good to see you. Did you speak to everybody? If you didn't speak to everybody, speak to somebody. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. For he is worthy, for he is, for he is. One more time, let's go up. Oh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Last time, it's good. Say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. I think y'all got it now. Can y'all help us sing it? For he is. Yes, he is. Oh, Lord. Come on, if you know he's good. For he is. Worthy. Oh, Lord. For he is. One more time. For he is. Come on, do you know that he's worthy? For he is good. 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 One more time. For he is good. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Come on, if you know he's good, put a clap on it right there. Now, come on, y'all. We've just sang about it. Let's act like it. Let's act like God is worthy of our worship. I said, let's act like God is worthy of our praise. Let's put our hands together. Let's open up our mouths and let's give God a good praise. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time, let's open up our mouths, wave our hands, do something to show God that we're glad to be in the service just one more time. Amen. We're going to collectively join ourselves together in this morning's hymn, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. Uh, we often say that in the black college tradition that there's this idea of collaboration. And so this morning we have the a cappella choir who's present with us ministering, as well as back by popular demand, the faculty and staff praise team. Can we give God thanks to them this morning? Amen. This is what the black college tradition is all about in terms of collaboration. So let's join ourselves together, if you all don't mind, in our hymn of praise, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. It's found here on the screen as well as in your bulletin. Let's put our hands together. transition time is filled with swift transition none on earth unmoved can stand none on earth unmoved can stand build your hopes on things eternal build your hopes on things eternal hold to God's unchanging hand come on y'all let's do that together Everybody ought to hold. Come on, y'all. God's, God's unchanging. Everybody ought to God's unchanging hand. You ought to be. Hold to God's unchanging. Trust in him who will not leave you. Trust in him who will not leave you. 
Whatsoever years may bring. Whatsoever years may bring. If by earthly friends forsaken. Still more closely to him cling. Y'all sound beautiful this morning. Everybody out of hope, come on. God's unchanging. We're going to. God's unchanging. We're going to. Verse 4, verse 4, when your journey is completed. If to God you have been true. Fair and bright your home in glory. Your enraptured soul will view. Come on, y'all, let's put those hands together. Everybody ought to. Come on, y'all, put those hands together. Everybody ought to. God's unchanging. We're going to. One more time, one more time, everybody. One more time, no music. Everybody ought to. Come on, y'all. You ought to. God's unchanging. You're going to. Come on, let's put those unchanging hands together. Come on, you all. It's been two weeks since we've been able to give God praise in the sanctuary. So why don't we take a couple minutes just to praise him, to lift him up, and to glorify God's name. Amen. Hallelujah. You all may be seated. While our choir remains, we're going to have our scripture reading, and then the a cappella choir is going to lift a selection. He looked beyond my faults. Miss Taylor is going to come now with our scripture reading. Good morning. Our scripture comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 through 12. The scriptures say, God commanded light to shine in the dark. Now God is shining in our hearts to let you know that his glory is seen in Jesus Christ. We are like clay jars in which this treasure is stored. The real power comes from God and not from us. We often suffer, but we are never crushed. Even when we don't know what to do, we never give up. In times of trouble, God is with us, and when we are knocked down, we get up again. We face death every day because of Jesus. Our bodies show what his death was like, so that his life can also be seen in us. This means that death is working in us, but life is working in you. This next song, He Looked Beyond My Fault, is dedicated to our head women's coach, basketball coach here that passed away, to the family, and in the memory of Ms. Tiffany Jackson.
amazing grace shall always be my song of praise for it was grace who brought my liberty Just why he came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw.
Come on, let's put our hands together and give God thanks for the faculty and staff praise team. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you will, very quickly to the gospel according to St. John, chapter 2, verse number 1, and the B clause is here in the monitors and also in your scripture reading found in your own personal devices. It just simply says, the wine gave out. And this morning, I want to speak from this subject, crisis or opportunity. Crisis or opportunity. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now, God, open the eyes, the ears, and the hearts of those who sit before you. Most of all, O oh God, bless what our eyes shall see. Bless what our ears will hear. And O oh God, bless what our hearts will feel. We ask these things now in your name, the name of the Christ. Crisis or opportunity. Wiley, uh, late President John F. Kennedy famously said, when written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents Danger, let the chapel say danger. And one represents opportunity. Let the chapel say opportunity. MLK later said, every crisis has both its dangers and its opportunities. And each can spell either salvation or doom. If I had to sum up this message in about 10 seconds, for those of you who might be tweeting, those who want to be able to get the synopsis of the word today. I would declare that we have the power to exchange problem for possibility. I'll wait for you all to catch that. We have the power to exchange problem for possibility. I know that a crisis is a time of intense difficulty. I know that crisis is a time of of trouble. I know that the crisis is a time of danger or of disaster, maybe even setback or hardship. Could be uh, hard uh, times, adversity, uh, uh, trouble, or emergency. We can share that crisis could be all of those things, but I, I've come by with a message that says your predicament does not always have to mean you have a black plight. That because uh, Christ is, is an opportunity that every problem can be a possibility. That every catastrophe and every calamity might be a chance for God to do something that you never expected to be done. Let the chapel say crisis. Let the chapel say opportunity. Seeing the opportunity in a situation means that we reframe what the incident means in our lives and how it is we are able to do something with it. And that's where we find ourselves this morning in the text in a town named Cana that's right next to Nazareth. And what has occurred here is uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Jesus and his disciples were invited to a wedding in this place called Cana. If we're truthful, if we get off our phones and pay attention, we might even agree this morning that we like a good wedding. I wish I would say amen. How many of you all like a good wedding? You like going to an opportunity of sitting in a place where you can uh, eat some food and, and see some families come together. Anybody like a good wedding here in the sanctuary? Okay, all right, all right. Well, it appears that at this particular event, 
we would conceive with our Western minds that a wedding only lasts one day. But back in this particular time, weddings could last for weeks uh, in this particular culture. That means weeks of dancing and, and weeks of having a good time and even weeks of drinking wine. But it's such an interesting predicament that happens in this story that in the midst of all of this dancing, in the midst of all of this having a good time, the Bible declares that the wine has given out. That means that the wine is gone. Anybody ever been somewhere where they called or had a last call for alcohol? Oh, I know some of y'all are above the age of 21, so you know what I'm talking about, right? Well, we don't like when they tell us it's the last call for alcohol. Maybe I'll speak for myself. I don't like when it's the last call for alcohol. I want to be able to continue to enjoy my friends, enjoy the lively discussion, enjoy the lively interaction that's taking place. But it happens so that they realize that the, the wine has now run out. And when we consider the fact that the wine has run out, we might believe that it's something uh, minuscule, something small, but literally in this time, running out of wine was not a simple inconvenience or a simple disturbance. It was a social disaster for the wine to run out. It was a disgrace. It was degrading for the host. The families would have to live with the shame of having a failed party. And I, I, I dare you to think about Thanksgiving and think about how it would be if the mac and cheese had run out. Maybe that's a better connection for y'all. Think about Thanksgiving if all the turkey had run out before you got there. Think about if all of the dressing or maybe the mashed potatoes, maybe the green bean casserole, for some reason you got to the party late and you could not get any because it had run out. Question this morning is, what do you do when you run out of that which was supposed to sustain you? I wish y'all would help me in here. Think about that relationship that was supposed to last always. Come on and help me. I wish you would think about that boo or that bae that was supposed to treat you right and all of a sudden other people are sliding in their DMs. I wish you would talk back to me about your roommate who was never supposed to talk about you, your fraternity brother who was never supposed to cross you. I wish you would help me in realizing that there are times that things that were supposed to sustain us have somehow run out. And many of us uh, might even declare that that would be a crisis, a situation of danger. I dare you to check your boyfriend's text messages and see some other woman texting him. I dare you to slide uh, in somehow social media and realize things aren't as copacetic as they seem. That might be a crisis on your hand. But I've come by with a message that says every crisis doesn't have to den end in danger. Every crisis doesn't have to end in a problem. There are times when a crisis can actually be a, an opportunity that every problem might be a possibility for God to do something in your life that you never expected. I know that you like this miracle uh, because it's when Jesus turns water into wine, but there's a character who we have been missing for the past few centuries in explaining this text, and that woman's name is Mary. Mary has three things to teach us about what to do when to turn a, a crisis into an opportunity. Number one, Mary teaches us how to have discretion. Let the chapel say discretion. That's a word we don't use a lot here at Wiley College. Everybody knows everybody's business here at Wiley College. We know about who you've been with and who, who you like and who, who you might have done some things with. But I've come by to let you know that in order for a crisis to turn into an opportunity that Mary teaches us, you have to learn how to close your mouth sometimes, not share everybody's business. Don't worry about talking about your friend or your foe. Sometimes you've got to have discretion. Let the chapel say discretion. 
Mary, watch this, y'all, was concerned with the negative implications that this family could somehow lose its power because they had run out of wine. And instead of Mary talking behind the family's back, instead of Mary running over to her friends and whispering that they've run out of wine, Mary decides to secretly walk up to Jesus and say, do something about their situation. And I wish I had a few people in here who could testify. It's not always talking about somebody although they've done wrong. Sometimes we've got to whisper a prayer to a God who sits up in heaven who's concerned about the things that we are going through. Maybe I shouldn't talk about the person who failed that test. Maybe I ought to pray for that person. Maybe I won't talk about who was on the internet or who was on social media, who made the blogs. Maybe I ought to just say a prayer for that person. I'll be honest with y'all and share a quick story. Back when I was in school, those of you who remember, uh, Facebook had something called the Honesty Box. Facebook had an app that you could literally write a message to any of your friends, but they would not know that you were the individual with whom wrote the message. And so, uh, I call myself being big and bad. I was getting ready for my sophomore year. I knew some people, knew some business about some people, and I was with some of my friends, and we decided we would drop some honesty box comments to some individuals we did not like. And so I found myself on the page of a girl who I knew wanted to be a Delta. And so with my naive self, with my silly self, with my immature self, I wrote in her honesty box, everybody knows you want to be a Delta. Stop wearing so much red. And for those of you who know anything about honesty box, honesty box had a glitch one time. And, and you were able to see who wrote you those messages. And so I got a call from that girl who had some not so nice things to say to me because I was immature and I was being silly. It was a crisis, but I used that as an opportunity to think before I did such stupid things again. You ought to be able to share in this place. You've been through some things that taught you that could have been a crisis, but was an opportunity to make you learn something, to make you do something better. Not only does Mary... Uh, have this question number two Mary has drive let the chapel say drive Mary walks up to Jesus gives the message to Jesus and Jesus says to her what does that have to do with me now what, what, what y'all are not understanding here is that this black man told this black mother what does that have to do with me I want y'all to hear me with your good ear, okay? I want you to, to imagine your mother walking up to you and telling you, go, go fix this problem, and you look at her and say, what does that have to do with me? Come on, somebody. Think about if your mother told you to go get the remote or, or to go get her something out the refrigerator, and you looked at her square in the eye and said, what does that have to do with me? And that is, uh, uh, some of you will understand in that moment, could have been a crisis in a black home. You could have been slapped into next week or maybe into the next month, or perhaps into the next year, because you don't talk to your parents any kind of way. Maybe that's a lesson for how we talk to people here at Wiley College. Maybe we ought to uh, learn that it's good for us to have some respect for our RAs and some respect for our uh, dorm mothers and dorm fathers. Why don't we have respect for our faculty and our staff? We have to watch how we talk to one another. Because uh, even though Jesus says to Mary, what does that have to do with me? Mary looks beyond the exterior and she sees in Jesus what Jesus refuses to see in himself. And that's all that drive is. Drive tells you to keep pushing even when it seems like it's not going to work. I told you all before uh, that I had a friend of mine aged 30 years old who when I was in my second year of seminary died of, of, of stomach cancer. 
This 30-year-old was a, a young girl who I grew up with singing in the choir. Our church had been praying for her. Our intercessors had been praying for her. Everybody in the community had been praying for her healing, and yet she had the audacity to pass away. She left us. And her family, uh, in the midst of all of their grief and all of their sadness, now has raised thousands of dollars for cancer research because they decided that a crisis might be time for an opportunity. They had some drive and they had some pushing that said even though the situation seems drear, even though we can't seem to find what exactly we're looking for, we're still going to press ourselves. Let the, let the chapel say drive. Lastly, uh, Mary teaches us that you had a, gotta have a determination. Let the chapel say determination. Mary goes up to Jesus because she used discretion. She, she pushes Jesus because she has drive. And even though Jesus uh, looks at her and says, what does that have to do with me? He says something else. He says, my time has not yet come. He's basically saying, I wasn't supposed to start out like this. But I've come by with an understanding that there are some times that our elders see more in us than what we see in ourselves. I wish you would help me. Think about uh, your teacher or your mentor. Think about the person who has been helping you along your way. Sometimes they see your potential even when you are a problem in their class. They see the goodness in you. They see the greatness in you. I know I have leaders like a Travion, leaders like an Elijah, leaders like a Larry, but they will be nowhere without people like a Dr. Crawford and a Dr. Vanderbilt who push them and continue to ensure that even what they don't see in themselves, that it will be pulled and pushed out of them. There, there are some athletes who you know if you had to get on the microphone, you would share your coach pushes you even when you think you're at the brink, even though your back is up against the wall. That's the type of determination that Mary had with Jesus that says, listen, I know you don't think you have it, but there's something on the inside of you that will cause you to help these people in the midst of their situation. Mary says to Jesus, help them out. She's determined to go on. And so you all know what happens at the end of the story. Uh, Jesus was able to turn the water into wine, and that is the entire miracle. It's a beautiful thing that, that God has the opportunity to, to turn some things around in your life, that God has the opportunity to move from frowns to smiles and from whimpers of fear into songs of hope, from, from sorrow into joy and from sin into grace. Can anybody testify that God has turned some things around in your life? That you have a shout this morning because the Lord has done some miraculous and some marvel. You weren't even supposed to be here at Wiley College, but the Lord opened up doors for you and, and made ways for you. God literally turned water into wine. Thought I might get some more amens there. But that's not my shout this morning. My shout is not that Jesus turned water into wine. My shout is the fact that later on in the scripture, it says that the man who was in charge of the reception goes up to the host and says, I've tasted this wine that you put out. And somehow, some way, most folks usually save the weak wine for last, but you have put now the best wine. And so could it be that God in God's wisdom has the ability to save the best for last? And that's the, that's the miracle for me this morning. That's my shout, that God has the ability to turn things that could have been bad into a better situation, but that God often saves the best for last. I wish you would help me in here and testify. You could be the last person born. You could have gotten into Wiley 
could have been your last college, but that God saves the best for last. I got some scripture that backs it up that even though David was the last of his children, even though Joseph was the last of the young boys, that because God often saves the best for last, that good things happen to them, that great things were able to take place, that even though there was a woman named Rahab who found herself to be in a brothel and owning some things that weren't right, that her family was saved. It could have been a crisis, but God changed it into an opportunity. I wish you would help me in here. That's what happened one Friday night when they counted out Jesus. They thought that he wouldn't make it. They said he'd never pull through, but some way, somehow, Jesus went to that Golgotha. He went to that Calvary, and he died on a Friday, but early one Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. I wish you would put your hands together there and give God glory. God saves the best for last. And that's all the, the message is this morning, that, that a crisis can indeed turn into an opportunity if you are determined, if you have drive, and if you're willing to be able to use your discretion, God can do some miraculous and marvelous things. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We thank you, O oh God, for the reminder today that our situation can turn in the right direction. That even though what was a problem might indeed be a possibility, that a catastrophe could actually turn into a connection for something better. And that even when the miracle comes, that you have something more for us, something better, something we could have never even imagined. We ask that you would bless us now as we go into this time of celebration of the bread and cup. In Jesus' name, amen. As we move into our time of receiving the bread and the wine, does everyone have a communion element with them? If not, just raise your hand. As our ushers come, we're asking that you all would please lift your hands if you need a communion element. There's a song that says the blood that Jesus shed way back on Calvary. It gives us strength from day to day. It reaches to the highest mountain, flows to the lowest valley. It will never lose its power. Let's sing together the blood. That Jesus shed for me. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It soothes, it soothes my doubt.
Come on, y'all. It reaches. Come on. Let's sing. It reaches. It reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows. Let's sing together. It flows. It flows to the highest valley. Oh, yes. The Lord that gives me strength from death. It will never lose. Come on, y'all. It will never lose. It will never lose. It will never lose. The night that the Lord was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Let's eat together. In like manner, he took the cup, which represents the New Testament. This is the blood that gives us strength from day to day. It gives us the power to move and reach us from the highest mountain to the lowest valley. Let us drink that together. Never lose its power. Come on, you all. Let's sing. It reaches. Let's stand together. And it flows to the lowest. Come on, you all. The blood, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose, it will never lose. 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 Come on, y'all, let's sing. It will never Last time it will never lose. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to see you move in a mighty special way. God, thank you for allowing us to see that indeed crises can turn into opportunities. We pray careful, oh God, to give your name glory and honor. I said to the one who stood at the gate, give me a light that I might go out into the darkness, out into the unknown. And one replied to me and said, go out into the darkness, go out into the unknown, but put your hand in the hand of God and God will be for you better than light and much safer than on the way. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. God's face forever shine upon you and grant you peace. Go forth inspired. As you all are heading over to the calf, be reminded that there's voter registration available by the MPHC. Please make sure that you sign up to vote. If you need prayer, you can meet me here at the altar. If you need prayer, meet me here at the altar.